Gentel, the Eiffel TV, in association with MTK Global. With me, I've got the former WBA heavyweight champion, undefeated cruiserweight king, none other than Mr. David Hay. How are you, sir? I'm very well, thank you. Yeah. Have you got your promoter hat on today? Are you feeling in this, this, is the promo the this is the promoter hat to, today, yes. All right. um, it's all about you know the, the, the young guys coming through. You know, uh, Michael Venom Page, Willie Hutchison, you know, the big Joe Joyce, the juggernaut. You know, it's all about them. They've got a huge uh, opportunity on Friday live um, on Dave Free to Air Channel 111, I think it is. Anyone could tune in. It's going to be a, a, a fun night of boxing for, for the fans. So I'm, I'm, this is the start of three amazing careers. All three, I believe, have the capabilities to become world champions and sort of global superstars. So I'm, I'm super excited about it. Let's break down each man. You've got the juggernaut, yeah. uh, Olympic silver heavyweight champion mm -hmm. Joe Joyce in his first professional outing against the very experienced yeah. Ian Layer Mount Lewis. A yeah, seasoned campaigner. Yeah. No, he's definitely not to be underestimated. I've actually had um, Ian Lewis and inspiring, inspiring with camp with me over the years. You know, he's been, a, he's been an amateur while I was an amateur. He's been in the game for a long time. And uh, I know he's got power in either hand. Uh, early doors, he's very dangerous. You know, you, you, you saw recently, you know, a, a year and a half ago, he was in the ring with uh, Dylan White. He, he pushed Dylan White um, in, a, in a competitive fight for 10, 11 rounds, and um, he, he retired on his stool, but he only had a few weeks' notice for that fight. This time, we've made sure that he's had ample experience, so we're going to get the very best Ian Lewis in, in the ring. I want to make sure of that, you know. Uh, I, You've I've said got, this before, that's a fantastic yeah, point. Yeah. yeah, you know, I, I, I believe. Joe Joyce is that good that you know I don't need to try and catch someone on two weeks' notice. You know, I'm gonna make sure that Ian Lewis that Ian Lewis is in prime condition. So after the fight, no one can say, oh, well you only gave him two weeks. What sort of preparation can you get from sparring condition you got? So we know he's coming to fight. We know Joe Joyce is in there for 10 rounds. He, in his mind, he's doing 10 rounds. You know, anything less is a bonus, but he's ready for 10 hard, grueling rounds. And in training, he's been showing me what you'd expect uh, you know, a young fighter to show, a young contender to show. And um, I'm, I'm very fortunate that you know, I'm, I'm gonna be part of his amazing journey as a professional boxer. Now, I know you and Joe Joyce don't spar. Joe Joyce once told me an yeah. analogy, a very David Hay-like analogy, that if you bought a Rolex, you wouldn't sort of smash it against the wall. No, it's a terrible analogy that. Um, we, we've both got right, but Joe Joyce is a come forward fighter and I'm a big puncher, so if we ever sparred with each other, one of us would end up getting smashed to bits. You know, and I've seen how good his chin is. I've seen him take full bloody shots. So it, it could be it could be a hard night for me. I'd have to literally go guns blazing. He only goes guns blazing, so I think we keep us two completely separate. We both have our own sparring partners, both working on two different things. So I, I think, you know, as, as his promoter, we, we, we keep it a little separate in the ring because it, it would get very, very tasty in there. And uh, we want to save the, all, all the fight and the graft for the ring. We saw Joe Joyce today, he's very supple, very flexible for yeah. the The capoeira moves that he does today, the uh, press was so pleased with it. Yeah. How do you think your Achilles would have that? I couldn't do that, I couldn't do that for starters. He's more flexible than I am, you know, he can basically do the splits, he can do backflips, he has his capoeira. So for a big guy, he's very, very nimble. People don't realise that. With his style that he showed as an amateur, you didn't quite get to see the sort of the dexterity of his movements. But working with Ismail Salas, he's really somehow brought that out on him so he's an athletic guy and you'll be seeing that in his performances I don't believe looking at his amateur pedigree you saw the very best of what he could do but now Friday night live on Dave come down to the Indigo Arena check it out it's going to be you know the start of the next um, the next heavyweight champion you know who would have who would have wanted to be there and my first pro fight or Andy Josh's first fight or Lennox Lewis's first fight this is the opportunity for people to be there at the start don't jump on the dump on, on the bandwagon after he's knocked out Ellis and be there for this fight to say you was there when this guy this guy's career when Joe Joyce the juggernaut had his first fight and um, believe me I, I'm so confident in his ability I need to hurry up and end my career before his one start we're kind of I'm coming to the end he's just starting I need to quickly achieve what I need to achieve before he comes because he's, he's hot on my tail already and, he's, and he hasn't even had one fight yet. We'll come on to your achievements in your career. I want to yeah. talk a little bit about Willie Bray Hutchinson. Yeah. He is so exciting. Mm. I mean, you only got to look at what his amateur accolades and success yeah. was. 
he's such a talent. How fast do you expect him to develop at 18? Um, he's very developed already. You know, he's just turned 19. Um, young, enthusiastic, bags of heart, bags of talent. He, he has every ingredient one requires to be a champion. He has everything you need. And uh, for me, that's that's the most important thing. He wants to come. He wants to learn. Every day he's improving. You know, he looks great in sparring. I watched him spar. I think two days ago, uh, it was the most explosive four rounds. He set a pace in the first round. He was sparring with a very good European level fighter, and he he started he started the fight. I knew he was only doing four rounds. He set the pace of the first round. I was like, that's a real unrealistic. Even for a four round spar, that's a heavy pace. And he just kept it going. And he can really dig in and really push. And the punch variety is, is slipping, his movement. He, he's, he's going to be, you know, uh, he's going to be very, very special. But he's only 19, so there's no reason for us to quickly fast track him. You know, very different with um, Joe Joyce, who's 32. You no, know, he needs to be fast tracked. He's about, he wants to be fast tracked, and he's going to be fast tracked. You know, um, Willie Hutchison, we, we, can, we can take our time with him. We can allow his his um, his talent to sort of flourish as and when it and it went and as and when it decides to. But keep an eye on this kid. You're going to see something very special. You know, every time I see him inspiring, it's like, well, like you're taken aback. You think you'd think this guy's had 20, 25 professional fights, but he hasn't. He's just had a lot of international amateur fights. Speaking of someone that's certainly not lacking confidence, and it seems as if he's had 25 fights already. He's MVP, Mike yeah. Venom Page. Now, talk to me about MVP. What do you see in him that makes you believe he can make that? that crossover transition from MMA to boxing. I've been going down to, to London Shoot Fighters, his uh, mixed martial arts gym, for many years now, watching him spar, watching him do his boxing. And he, he's the most awkward guy. He kind of reminds me a bit of sort of Errol Graham. He's got this kind of awkward sort of half Nassim Hamid, half Errol Graham, so where you just can't hit him. He's just got your sort of Pernell Whitaker. He turns southpaw, he turns orthodox, changes the range, changes the distance. He does some crazy things in, in, in a boxing ring where, which I can't physically do. And I've never seen anyone. He does these, these punches that I've never seen anyone throw before. And um, watching him sparring, he, you know, we bring him good quality guys from to spar, you know, world level fighters from to spar, and he and he's he's he's, he's playing with these people. So um, he's one of these he's one of these freaky people who um, just got it. He's a natural um, combatant, you know. He was ten time kickboxing champion, uh, you know, twelve and zero in 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 the octagon. You know, he, he headlined the fight at the O2 Arena when he fought Cyborg. I was there live watching that. He finished that fight before the fight. He said to me exactly what was going happen he said I'm gonna hit this guy with a knee and knock him out and I was like okay fair enough he showed he did the public workout he just did one knee one knee in the public workout come the fight cyborg very accomplished fight very tough grueling knocks him out with one knee not only knocks him out caves his head in he literally needed like things like 25 plates inside his skull because he came watch it cyborg and MVP go on YouTube check that he can do that type of thing in boxing. He how, can will he, how will he work when he can't throw the knees? He can't throw the elbows. You'll see, he somehow manages to throw the most awkward punches and they're solid and hard. I've never seen anything like it and th this is what excites me about him. He's so unorthodox. You know, you've got to tear up the... Anyone who fights him has to tear up the boxing rule book because although he's punching his fist, the shots are coming from... It's cra crazy angles and you, you, need to, you need to watch this guy. But the good thing that I'm happy about, you know, Dave, TV, you know, it's available to everyone, it's free to air, and everybody, you know, can watch it. Anyone with a television set can watch it. And for me, that was really good to get these guys' careers going and make it available to the masses. It's great to see Haymaker Promotions branching out and looking to, to as I said, push these young fighters to yeah. the next stage. Right? Exactly. I want to talk a little bit about Anthony Joshua and Kubrat Polev. We saw that Kubrat Polev sustained an injury in training, he yeah. was not now fit and able to fight. We, we've seen Carlos Takam yeah. get a shot. Um, what are your thoughts on that whole situation? I mean, it, it happens in the highest level of uh, boxing. You know, fighters, uh, when you're pu pushing it in the gym, things happen. Kubit Prulov, I believe, shot, had a shoulder injury and um, he's out, which leaves, I think, number three ranked Carlos Takam from France. Uh, a guy who I've actually had in sparring camp uh, for, for when I won a challenge and knocked out Derek Chisora. He was my one of my, I think he was my chief sparring partner for that fight and um, gave me some great rounds, some great work. Very tough guy. Um, he pushed um, uh, Joseph Parker the distance, you know, uh, lost on a decision there. Got knocked out against um, Povetkin in Russia. So um, when he steps up, you know, he, he, he's lost. Um, but, you know, he, he's a tough guy. Uh, you, you can't 
can't um, envisage him um, beating Anthony Joshua and the fact that he got knocked out against um, Alexander Povetkin doesn't really bode well for him and he had ample notice for the Povetkin fight so he was in great condition for the Povetkin and gave a gallant effort but that effort wasn't good enough and he was knocked unconscious in that fight and um, you can't you, you couldn't really give him too much of a chance against Anthony Joshua Anthony Joshua's on too much form of late coming off the, the, the Klitschko fight you know you wouldn't expect the Carlos I can to hear the final bell on two weeks' notice. On, as an elite level heavyweight, would you accept a fight like that on two weeks' notice? I wouldn't know. No, you know, I, 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 I would never get. I, I would. I, I wouldn't get in the ring. Um, at this stage in my career, um, on, on two weeks' notice, for sure, no. Do you respect, respect Takam? No, you have to. to what you got? What you got? What you have to remember with uh, Carlos Takam? He's had two challenges. He challenged uh, Povetkin. He was knocked out. He went over to uh, New Zealand to challenge uh, Joseph Parker. He failed. He got a couple hundred thousand dollars for those efforts. You know. How, when's he going to ever earn any more than 100,000, 200,000 euros, dollars? Career high but payday? He's going to get probably maybe two, three million dollars for this fight. Million pounds, euros. If he gets a million, that's a, he can then, you know, that changes his life. So going into a fight underprepared, but by doing so, you can secure your family's future for the rest of your life. He's, he's a, I know, you know, he's going he's gonna to take the fight. He's going to take the fight. Most heavyweights, you know, whose career are not secured would take the fight because it's a life-changing experience, a life-changing payday and uh, most boxers just want to earn enough money so they secure their family's future. This is his opportunity. Unfortunately, he's only got two weeks. I hope he's one of those fighters who don't you know, get fat between fights and just blow up. I hope he's a, you know, when he was here, he came in, he was in great shape for me. You know, he could, he could do, you know, five, six rounds at a good pace and, you know, he had, he had a good engine. So hopefully, you know, he can, he can at least give, ask some questions potentially to Anthony Joshua. He's going to need to get close. He's a, he's a type of fighter who likes to fight close. He's got very, he's think he's about five foot eleven, maybe six foot at tops. Um, but he's very solid, very strong. Got a decent chin, and um, you know, if he can get close to Joshua and rough him up, may be able to ask him some questions early doors. But once Joshua gets his range. I think um, he's, he's only one winner. See Joshua putting him to sleep, do you see an, an early night for Well, po Povetkin put him to sleep, and I, I wouldn't say Povetkin punches um, any harder than uh, Anthony Joshua, so I'd, I'd say, uh, and, and when he did knock um, uh, Tark Carlos Takam out, when Povetkin did knock him out, Carlos Takam was in his perfect condition. He turned up in great shape, set a good pace, and really went to town, throws lots and lots of punches. He doesn't have a big punch, but he, he has consistency in the volume of punches that he throws. So um, let's hope that he, he can make it competitive, but you know, I'm, I'm not gonna hold my, I'm not gonna really hold my breath there. Let's talk about your fight coming up with Arch Nemesis, Tony Bellew. I know how much it hurt you to suffer defeat first time to Tony Bellew, and I know- Any defeat hurts. I know Every that, single defeat I've Tony had Bellew has hurt. in particular must have been a big wound for you. Every, all, all, all losses for me, uh, hurt, you know, I hate losing, I hate losing anything, I hate, hate losing at table tennis, <laughs> let alone boxing, something that I believe I'm the best at. Redemption, so, a chance for you to yeah, prove it's, it's, that it's, you it's, are better than Tony Bellew. It's not even so much to prove that I'm better than Tony Bellew, it's a chance for me to uh, prove that I am who I believe I am, and I believe I'm the best in the world. How would somebody who's the best in the world deal with Tony Bellew? That's the question. I believe they, sh they, they, they don't allow him to go the distance and that's my, that's my sole mission is to go out there and show what I can do. You know, I, I, I believe I underperformed, I believe he overperformed last time, he boxed great, you have to give the guy credit, he did exactly what he said he was going to do and he won the fight, he was victorious. I believe, you know, a second time round, I, got, I, I, can, I can write what I believe were the wrongs of the event. Um, it's gonna, everyone's so excited about this fight. You know, anybody who watched the first fight, even people who didn't see the first fight and just seen the highlights of the fight, want to see this next fight. And it's good that I'm 37 years old, which I turned last week. 37 years old, and, thanks a lot. 37 years old now. And you know, I'm still in these fights that really capture the public's imagination. You know, tickets sold out straight away. You know, it's going to do great numbers. You know, um, and it's a fight that every, everyone gets excited. I'm excited. I'm sure him and his team are excited. It's one of those one of those grudge matches that you know people are going to be talking about for years to come.
You've got aspirations to challenge WBC champion John A. Wilder, IBF and WBA champion Andy Joshua. Must you be clinical in your performance yeah, I, I, against Tony Brown? No doubt about it. If if anybody anybody's going to take me seriously, I need to look a million dollars on uh, December 17th. If I don't, if I, if I you know struggle on points, if I get knocked down a couple of times, if my shoulder pops out, my leg snaps, no one's genuinely going to take me seriously. A lot of people don't take me seriously now. You know, after the strength of the last effort, they're like, nah, mate, your best days were behind you. You know, what are you doing carrying on in the ring? I believe I've still got it. You know, I'm, I'm doing things in training that I haven't been able to do for years. You know, but I, I believe everything happens for a reason. And uh, hopefully on uh, December 17th, everybody will see what I believe. And um, we're going to get ourselves a, a fantastic, uh, entertaining night of boxing. It'll be an early Christmas treat for everybody. You know, Sunday, 17th of December, it's going to be on Sky Box Office. You know, it's going to be a really, really great occasion. Before we end, I just want to ask you a couple of honest questions. Do you dislike Tony Bowie? In what sense? He's not. My, I don't send him uh, Christmas cards or. Um, you know, he's not. You know, he's not my type of guy. You know, whenever I've listened to his interviews or whenever, he's not my type. And, and I'm sure I'm not his type of guy. He said it pretty clearly. We just, we just different type of people. We both look at the world in different ways. And in any, in any aspect of life, I'd kind of veer away from his personality and probably vice versa. So um, when they don't like him, you know, I want to beat him. Plain and simple. But then again, I want to be, if I was fighting my best mate, I'd still want to be him. Okay. You know, boxing's about winning. It's about, you know, looking good winning. And um, in the past, maybe I focused too much on how I felt about him, which had a negative effect on my performance. So this time around, I, I, all of that, I'm like, forget that. All I need to focus on in myself, all I need to focus on is making sure that the David Hay who walks to the ring on December 17th is optimal, is healthy, fit, fast, athletic, no injuries, no drama, no complications in my life, no, I need to forget about all of, I just need to make sure that I'm optimal. And my coach Ishmael Salas, my whole team are doing everything to make sure that you know, I'm stress-free walking to the ring, you know, the, as the best version of myself can be at the, the tender age, the seasoned age of, um, 37. Quick point from Dave Caldwell, he said, how you find him handling a smaller <coughs> coach after the stick you gave him for holding the pads for Bellew in the <laughs> Well, I've got him these big platform boots. We've got, we've got, I've got him these, um, Chris, I've actually got them here, wait a minute. I've actually got these. Wow. That's I've actually incredible. got these custom Christian Louboutin. We worked with Christian Louboutin to make sure that, you know, he's up, he's about, this gets him this gets him about eight seven eight inches higher than he would ordinarily be okay, so and these um, are generally worn by Ishmael Salah this is these are his, these are his shoes that he wears when he hits when I hit the pads of him so I'm punching at these are designed specifically for me to punch at Tony Bellew's head level and likewise they're the same as uh, uh, Ian Lewison for Joe Joyce to hit the pads so if I fight someone taller these will have to be even longer but uh, you know we've got the the, 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 these actually, these boots were actually um, only for the Cuban Olympic team. They were made specifically by Christian Louboutin for the Cuban Olympic team at the Rio Olympics. So, um, so we've uh, so we've managed to get some from the main man himself. And uh, there you go. <laughs> so yeah, so I know they, they, I gave Doe Cobos a stick, jumping up and hitting the pads. But you know, obviously that then went, once my new coach came in and a kind of a similar height, I was like, okay, how are we gonna get how are we gonna get around this? So we constructed these um these are classy the Cuban style Christian the boots on boots. I'll make I'll, and actually I'm gonna make uh, Dave Coldwell a pair so he can he can yeah, do the are same Are they gonna thing. be Christian the boots on or? I'll, I'm gonna get him some <laughs> I don't know some other ones I know some.